Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, well, this is not exactly what I was looking for, <laughs> but they made the announcement, which I was getting worried, because I hate when they do this, so it seems that they're doing another live stream 24 hours before the update. Again, I've already said that, how they should really kind of do it, preferably like a week before, just saying, but it is what it is. At the end of the day, we're getting that live stream. Um, ignore yeah that, that's just a july that's a bit of a typo on their end but yeah so basically on tuesday june 9th 6 p.m pdt time so if you're in europe you're looking around about 3 a.m <laughs> oh god um so yeah that's pretty much uh, on that and the one thing which i love that they've done is obviously for the silhouette we know this is you and we you know we, we'll see what she's capable of we know she's a ranged attacker we just need a further more confirmation on her kit um the other thing which I love is they've also now confirmed the weapon. Typically, if you guys remember the last time we got a weapon, it was the Scatty Pistol and we didn't know anything about it and it just dropped. Um, well, now they're going to inform us about it, which is fantastic. Um, also, just to confirm that this is going to be um, a fire attribute update. If you guys can look right at the bottom right here, blazes through all the new content in the next patch. Blazes. Keyword blazes <laughs> so that furthermore confirms that this is going to be a fire attribute uh, buff so Jim we will be getting a new fire weapon in a version of a bow and uh, yeah we'll see what the fire team is going to be getting but we've got an idea of course so obviously we've previously looked into on what we currently know about the Phoenix bow so just a reminder, if anyone is unsure, um, basically the best way I can kind of put it in a, in, a, in a short story format is just imagine Alicia being a fire typing and being a, uh, sorry, being a weapon, right? Imagine if you had Alicia being a fire typing as a weapon for Jinwu. That's basically what the Phoenix bow is. It is a weapon that is catering to the core damage, as you guys know. Recently, we've had you know a lot of things going on with the core meta. And so um, we're going to be getting a weapon. Uh, if things don't change, then I think the foundation for this weapon will be around the core mechanic. In terms of what the weapon will be doing for the dupes and whatnot, it will probably will switch up. You guys have to remember that with this information that we have right here, this was released back, I think, either before the global release or just after the global release. So yeah early days early days so more than likely things have changed but if they are keeping it to the core mechanic then i think for the most part to how the core attack works to do more damage i think that's going to stay the same so when phoenix rapid fire is used the fire bird soul effect is applied every third sixth and ninth arrow when the last attack of the basic attack hits applies the fire bird soul effect fire bird soul core attack changes the flame shot increases flame shot damage by 50 percent per firebird salt instances stacking up to three times um when the user uses flame shot consumes all firebird salt instances duration is infinite so again pretty much on par like very very similar to alicia uh, we all have her we know how she rolls just kind of take that and put it into this bow and the mechanic is pretty much going to be the same unless they change it um, first dupe fills 34% of the user's core gauge every third, sixth, and ninth arrow of the Phoenix Rapid Fire. Increase the user's fire damage by 20%. On the last attack of the Phoenix um, Phoenix Rapid Fire, fire bird soul stacks two times. Increase flame shot damage by 60% per. So realistically, you want to get to well. I'm personally, if they keep the dupe system as is which they technically could and just raise the percentage into how the percentages needs to be now with where the games are then this weapon will be just as fine but preferably i would like to get it to um a3 so we kind of maximize the um the core damage as well as uh, having the uh well yes yeah, st stacks two times yeah fiber stacks two times on the last shot which will give us a four stack so that way we only need to gain back another two stack through doing the third and the sixth shot right so that way uh the core damage or the core attack being the flame shot is used more quicker so that's kind of where i would like it to be at um oh yeah so yeah so basically 240 in total is what the flame shot will be um getting with the increase of damage so yeah that's kind of what we want uh cooldown as per usual and then on the final shot 
when flame soul was uh, sorry when flame shot is used they regain the firebird soul instances that were cons uh, that were consumed at one to three instances you get one back and then if you have a con if you have a total of four you get two back and then the core gauge also fills up to 100 percent so basically a5 is just a rapid fire of flame shots realistically so it is broken it does come across as a fantastic weapon again seeing how Alicia works seeing the consistency of damage output we can produce with her um, if they if they are basically taking that and putting it as a weapon to this then um, this is going to be one hell of a fire range weapon so yeah, that's pretty much the Phoenix bow now um, just a quick little reminder on the, uh, the new character, Suhona, of course. Now, first things first, we know that she's a breaker. Um, like, unless things change, who knows? I hope I hope that's not the case. Um, but, <clears throat> again, just a reminder on how she's working. First things first, she's a ranged user. She's a ranged attacker. The best comparison I can say about her is she's basically, in a way, going to be working off how Lim kind of works for the dark typing. Um, kind of like a ranged sub dps breaker right that, that's kind of like how how she's going to be working of course uh so that's that's one comparison i can make since we're making comparisons with characters that we already have in game um so obviously she's going to be the fourth fire element so this is the support of course um when used applies the spotlight effect defense penetration effect increases by 1.3 times uh so usually defense penetration stat increases damage by a certain percent uh, with for a certain period of time this doesn't make sense because it's a support so I'm not too sure why it'll be affecting her because it, it's, it's kind of voided <laughs> but we'll see what happens um, ultimate unless that's the QTE skill unless that's what it's meant to say <clears throat> ultimate um, pretty much you and your droids will do like a beam of attack um, so I'm expecting a good amount of damage from this skill um, when used creates a magic weapon that deals 10% of the attack power as damage for a certain amount of seconds of course so that's the ultimate itself um, passive when using the skill fire burst on um, the spotlight effect is applied the defense penetration effect is increased by 1.3 times so you defense penetration stat increases uh, increases the damage stat by 7% damage dealt to targets outside the range of certain meters increased by a certain amount uh, and then passive two hitting a target outside of range of the certain meters with the skill death fire resets the cooldown by certain seconds when hitting the target with death fire core attack is activated for a certain amount of seconds core attack damage increases by a certain percent so obviously with because uh, i've done a pre-build i've done an early build speaking about what you really want to cater to in terms of building this character you're more than welcome to check that out if you guys want to get ahead of the game and prepare for suhern of course but um defense band attack damage increase that's kind of what we're looking at of course just kind of building up her on the offensive manner and the fact that they've kind of catered a little bit more to the core meta is absolutely beautiful so um yeah we can really cater to that if anyone is actually really built up the core meta on their account so i, I love the fact that they kind of had to throw that in there it's <laughs> pretty nice of them um and then defense pen on the on the passive three increase sorry and then passive four which is weird because that should be passive three. Oh wait passive one should be the main passive okay this makes sense so passive four is actually passive three hitting a target outside the range of certain meters with the skill fire burst applies the increased defense penetration effect and increased death fire damage by a certain percent um defense pen penetration increases by a certain amount yeah passive three loki is going to be pretty pretty nice to have i'm not gonna lie um and then passive four you get the damage increase which doesn't make sense i think that should have been a okay that that might change to um cooling down the skill that's what typically happens on all passives so we'll see what happens and then on the final passive um increases damage when applying spotlight effect i feel like i i, I do genuinely feel like the passives are going to get done up a little bit more um again as we all are aware you know with this update that's happening um this is the final update that we have and then the next piece of content we get is the guild update and then from that point on um it's going to be the 100 day celebration as well as the first ever Arise Festival. So uh, my, my, my thoughts are that they're gonna try their best to make it a huge, huge incentive for the weapon and the character to be pulled. So I do believe that the passives are gonna be done up slightly because right now I'm looking at the passives and um, even though it sounds cool and all, I'll be more than happy just for going for the first passive and dipping, to be honest. So <laughs> we'll see what happens. 
Um, core attack, just get damage increase, skill 1, apply stuns. So a bit of stunning going on. That could actually be pretty that, that could be big to be honest. Skill 2 is where you apply the spotlight effect, which gives you an increased damage, so a bit of a buff right there. Uh, and then your QT. Oh wait, so the so wait. The, the, something's wrong with the support skill then. Because the QTE skill uh, when used creates a magic weapon that deals 10% of attack power as damage. <coughs> so pretty much what the ultimate does. <laughs> Interesting. Okay, so yeah, that's pretty much as far as we're aware on what Suhoni will be bringing to the table. But um, in an overall manner on what we're looking at from her, it's uh, as it stands the role of a um, yeah sub DPS breaker. I think with the buff that Choi gets, I think he's still going to be handling business and keeping the, the um, main head role. But, uh, I mean, technically speaking, you, you, I feel like <clears throat> even if you don't have Choi, or it, you, you could in some way put Sukiyon up front and actually make her the main DPS if, if that's what you choose to. As it stands with how the current information that we have, um, she is usable as a main DPS if you choose to.